Welcome to a new episode of Quarantine Chat. I am your host, Holly Randall, or as some like to call me, Ho Rogan, which I love. That's like my favorite name ever. I think it's hilarious. Um, you get it, right? I do. I okay. haven't heard that one yet. I thought I was very I, impressed. Sorry. I guess I was expecting a bigger laugh out of you. I <laughs> thought you were gonna have a bigger reaction and think that was great, but clearly you're not as impressed by it. It's pretty as I great. Am. I yeah, I had to let it sink in. That's how great it was. It's like oh. <laughs> you can pull that one over. <laughs> yeah, one of somebody called me um somebody called me Ho Rogan in one of the comments on YouTube and I think they meant for it to be an insult, but I just thought it was so great. I was like No, oh, it's God. perfect. Right. Especially <laughs> since he just signed a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify. I know I saw that and it's funny like your podcast and his podcast are the only two podcasts I listen to <laughs> <laughs> yeah I get that You're I, next, get that <laughs> I get that a lot from people. we have a very we have the same format that's kind of like the only um similarity between our podcasts but he's, he's and you're both really smarter funny. than I am so he's not hard. as hot as you though so <laughs> 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 You've got that over his head for sure. <laughs> Thank God. Hello, everybody. I see some favorites in here. I see Walter. Hi, Walter. I see KFB. Hi, KFB. Um, these are people that come to a lot of my live chat, so it's always wonderful to see people come back. Hi, Michael in Nebraska. Hi, Gigi. Hi, Kevin Fitzgerald, Karina Dahl. Um, it's really great to see you guys. And Bailey, it's great to see you too. Before we started, we were just saying how sad it was because the next time we were supposed to see each other was supposed to be at Book of Mormon. I was going to take her for her first time. My first time. First time. Poor Book of Mormon. I Poor know. us. <laughs> So I just want to tell you guys something funny about Bailey. And I and I discovered this the first time I ever met oh, her when no. I shot her for twisties. <laughs> so whenever I shoot people, models, I always ask them what they want to listen to because you know I want the girls to um enjoy whatever they're listening to, make them feel sexy, you know, like the day's all about them. So they always get to DJ. And most girls, you know, want hip hop or like top hits. <laughs> The girls want like trap music, whatever that is. Um, but Bailey here Funny. made a request that nobody else has ever made, and that was show tunes. Idina Menzel. And and I was I was amused <laughs> because I thought that's really cute, and I thought, of course, I'll put show tunes on. Like, when do I ever get to do that? I like show tunes, I guess. After about an hour, I was like, we, we need to change this. <laughs> it was all fun and games until the soundtrack from Frozen came on. It got a little weird. Like, I feel like the soundtrack from Frozen <laughs> came on several times. I know. <laughs> because I think we were on Pandora, and I think they have, like, just limited access to show tunes. Yeah, and, and they just uh, play anything by the artist. So, yeah, it got a little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so Bailey loves show tunes. And she will know like all of the lyrics to all of the songs um, all, of all the show of all the show tunes, all the music all the show music. tunes ever. <laughs> but she won't have seen them. She'll never like go see them. They're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I don't want to go alone. That's why I go with you. Yeah. Well, and I there are certain musicals that I love so. Book of Mormon, um, I was like, we gotta go. And I love Book of Mormon, I've seen it, have I seen it twice? I've seen it once seen for it sure. Twice? I might have seen it twice. So I saw twice. it once in New York, thanks to Danny Daniels, she got me like backstage passes and stuff, long story, but She's it was really awesome. cool. Um, so uh, I love Book of Mormon, so I was gonna, so Bailey already knew all the songs, knew all the words, and we were gonna go, and then quarantine hit. And we were sad. Yeah. Like, I haven't left my house since March 11th. Well, except for one doctor's appointment. I did have a doctor's appointment. But I still, like, may have gone to Book of Mormon. Like, I yeah. haven't done anything. 
<laughs> like if it hadn't been canceled, I probably would have risked it. <laughs> I leave terrible. my house like I leave my house not super frequently, but I definitely go out. I have to go to like the post office. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband usually does the grocery shopping, but you know, you just put on a mask. And- oh, I love how that sounds. You just said my husband. I know it's weird, oh, right? I love it. <laughs> weird. Still sounds weird to me. I still catch myself saying, saying boyfriend. I'm so happy for you. It's so exciting. Thank you. I know I was bugging you about it for a while there. I was like, so <laughs> when? Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> but uh, you know, things happen when they happen, and it happened when I got a when I got pregnant. <laughs> kind of needed to home girl needed to get on his insurance he's got very yeah, good insurance that's pretty fucking exciting too by the way oh yeah my God. thank you i know you want to see yeah. i'm like getting oh crazy wow. right it's pretty damn <sighs> i know i have the weirdest dreams though it's insane like my dreams are so so strange what happens just like and this is normal my sister-in-law She's also pregnant and she warned me. She's like, you're going to have the craziest dreams. That's like common for pregnant women. And I, I do. I have the most bizarre dreams like every single night. And they're all bad. They're all like nightmares or anxiety. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they're all terrible. I thought this was going in a different direction. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It could be worse. Otherwise, it's been an easy, easy pregnancy. But, you know, <laughs> so. Well, I hope but, your dreams get better. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. It's not like I got, I didn't get morning sickness. So I guess that's, that's what I get. I get bad dreams. It's okay. I guess if um, I to choose between the two, I would pick the dreams. Yeah. As well. But how are you doing? I'm good. My dogs and I just like hang out and film content and tweet <laughs> and eat. So much eating. Uh, oh, girl. I know. <laughs> I get it. Um, have you, uh, have you noticed like an uptick in like your content sales, your camming audience, anything like that? Not really. No. Um, so I'm allowed to talk about like the website I work on, right? Yeah, you can do about anything. Um, MFC used to have like an average of like, I don't know, 700 to maybe 1200 girls on, mm. on any given night. And like, it's been past 2000 lately. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. there's just so many girls and there are so many people out of work that there are people on the site. Like I would say there are more people like like members visiting the site, but no one is really like prepared to spend that much money on that many girls. Like it's so yeah. spread out people who do yeah. have money. So um I usually do a rank month in May and oh, right. Where you like don't sleep or like you cam every day for how long do you camp for? Um, well, I used to do like several out, like six to eight hours a day, but it was just not healthy. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, no. I mean, I usually do like three to five hours every day. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, the numbers just aren't quite what they used to be. And I think it's just because the markets are saturated. Yeah, yeah, it's just so high. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't really be mad. Like, what do I expect? I can't be like, give me your stimulus check. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So, I don't know. I just have to suck it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully things will go back to some version of normal at some point. Oh, my gosh. Right? I hope so. Um, so, Big H, what up, girl? She sent us our first super chat. Big H says, good evening, Holly, Bailey, Eva. Hope you are all well. Um, I just want to let you guys know quickly before I respond to Big H um, uh, what Super Chats are. So basically, you can tip any amount that you want, and it'll make the question go, or it can just be a shout out. It doesn't have to be a question. Make it bold. It'll make it go to the top. It'll be easier for me to see. The more you tip, like the, the it gets pinned to the top for a longer period of time. But honestly, anything that you want to tip, it's fine if you can't. I also understand, like Bailey was just saying, like we get it. You know, sometimes you can't spend your stimulus check on us. Um, so <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to try to get to all the questions if I can, but usually it's it's kind of impossible because there's generally a lot of you guys in here. So it's just a way to show your support and to ensure that your question gets to Bailey. But either way, I love you guys. 
So um, real quick, Big H, I do want to say thank you so much for the book order. I got that. I mailed it out today. Um, I signed it to you, and I actually sent you a little extra bonus gift because I love you so much, and you're so consistently a super chat messenger, and you come to all of my live shows, and I believe you're on my Patreon as well, so you're just like super, you're wonderful. You're super awesome. Super, super, super. Everything's super. And so I just want to let you know that um, I did send you, I got to actually plug the tracking number in so you'll get an email from Shopify with the tracking number. But, um, but thank you. So um, Eva, can you do me a favor? Can you stick in the link to um, my merch store so people can go check it out? If you guys don't know, I got a new logo and I've added it to a bunch of really cute stuff. And so um, I haven't put mugs in there yet, but I will. And you can also get my books. It's shophollyrandall.com. Um, Bailey, I'm actually, I'm going to order a bunch of like stuff for girls and I'll send you some stuff like little sports bra and stuff. I don't know if you've seen my new logo. I changed it. So it's no longer my face. Is it the one that's like, it's the picture like on your like, like lineup of podcasts? Like yeah. yeah, it's lips with devil ears and like yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. <laughs> so, um, so I'm I gonna love make a bunch. Of, yeah. So, um, I, uh, yeah. So I, I just got distracted. I may, I'm going to make a bunch of merch with that logo on it. I'm gonna send it to like all my guests. So I'll definitely send that to you. Nice. <clears throat> um. Walter wants to know what your favorite song is from Book of Mormon. In fact, I actually, he, says, away. he <laughs> says, can we hear it? I think means he wants you to sing. <laughs> I um, I just sing that one part. Hasadega <laughs> Eboi. <laughs> that song is so funny. Like, yeah. I love the song, Baptize You. Oh my gosh. Baptize you. <laughs> so good. It's the so good. The that are actually really pretty. Like the girl. <laughs> yeah. The girls is anyway. <laughs> yeah. The, um, it's just like, so, so if, for those of you who don't know, the Book of Mormon was created by the guys from South Park. And they're just so talented. We watched um, Team America again the other night. I think I made it like halfway through the movie before I got tired. But um, it is like, they're just so great. They're so talented. They're so funny. They've crossed so many different genres. It's amazing. Is that the movie that goes, has uh, America? Fuck yeah. Is that, one? Is that it? Oh, oh. Yes. Oh, I remember that. Okay, so my husband wants to talk about the story when I had to drive you guys back from ABN. Remember when there was that huge storm? So there was like a <laughs> huge crazy storm one year after Vegas. And we, no, we didn't drive. We flew because you, flew. you yeah. always make me fly. Yeah, we all and flew there, but we couldn't fly back. We couldn't fly back. The planes were stuck in like O'Hare or something. Yeah, so we, um, it was like a terrible storm. And so we rented a car and had to drive over the grapevine. And what did we see, like eight car accidents on the way? There was one that was coming like right at us and it hit the divider. Yeah, right in front of us. And I remember I was driving and I was the only one who was not hungover. Homeboy over here was very hungover. And I it was driving. Wasn't as hungover as he was. No, no, I don't think anyone <laughs> was as hungover as he was. The minute we dropped you off at your apartment, he and then you got out of the car and like puked just... everywhere <laughs> for like a really long time. I've never seen him that the bad. Poor guy. <laughs> that was that was the time. Oh, were, were you there at the Avian Awards that night? Um, I was sitting in the balcony and I heard all about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because you weren't at our table, so we were at the. Well, were were we at the browsers table? Or mind geek. Yeah, we were at like the mind geek table. Someone got so sassy. hammered. <laughs> so hammered. He wanted to fight Greg Lansky. <laughs> For no reason. Well, no, the best line was, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, no. And then he turns to me, right? So we're like halfway through the awards. And he's getting bored, as most people do at the Avian Awards. And he turns to me and goes, when are you going to start winning some shit so we can get out of here? <laughs> and I was like, never. 
<laughs> I've never won an AVN award and I'm not going to win one tonight. So there you go. There's your oh my God. Should we just leave? And then the next day, he was miserable. <laughs> he was so miserable and he deserved it. Bye, Bailey. Bye, Bailey. Bye, bye. <laughs> you leaving? Oh my God. That was, uh, yeah, and we almost died. That car, that had the car accident right in front of us. The and rain I kept, was cool. just nuts. I just kept going straight and then swerved because if I had swerved, we would have hydroplane. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to say that I probably saved your life that day. So there you go. I deserve, I deserve acknowledgement for saving Bailey Rain's life. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay, 91 Giles asks, uh, thoughts on girls do porn and the negative legal aspects from it. Do you know much about that case? Oh, that's the website? That yeah, it's the website where they basically like lied to these girls about what they were doing with the content. Yeah. So what did they do? Did they distribute it without consent or? Yeah, they, um, they told, they, I honestly didn't look that closely into the case. Um, but from what I understand, and I'm sure somebody here will probably correct me. Um, I, uh, I believe that they filmed these girls and told them it wasn't going to be distributed like on the internet on some mass level. I don't know what the girls would have thought the content was for, if it was for private collection or whatever but anyways they did and so the girls got very upset and then they got sued and um they were prosecuted i don't know if the guys served in jail time or not um i don't remember what happened if anybody remembers what happened exactly with that situation let us know um because i honestly was not following it that closely so <clears throat> um yeah uh, K Max, what up, K Max? Welcome back. K Max is another frequent visitor to our live chats. Um, he says, for Bailey, what was your experience on Hot Girls Wanted like? <laughs> That's a throwback. Um, Ooh, Holly was on the show too. Were you treated fairly? So I'm obviously going to let Bailey answer that question, but for more context, if he wants them, the first um, episode that we did do together for my podcast, we talked extensively about Hot Girls Wanted. So if you, you can go back and actually watch that. But uh, yeah, Bailey, Bailey, <laughs> what was your experience like? Because I know it wasn't all rainbows. No. Um, so I was so excited when they contacted me and like, God, we started that December, I think of 2015. That's when I got started in it. Yeah, I didn't do it till like July. <laughs> Well, I didn't finish until August of 2016. So we filmed and filmed and filmed and filmed and filmed. And essentially I was doing work for an agency, recruiting girls and driving them around and, you know, making sure they had bank accounts and birth control. <laughs> like I was doing all kinds of stuff that I hadn't really planned on doing when I signed on to be an assistant. Um, and I didn't get paid for any of it except for recruiting like one girl mm. uh, I don't know there's like this assumption that I made all this money off all these girls and it's like I get a lot of like messages about that like how dare you take advantage and like I was literally just doing it to be nice <laughs> it's so hilarious because anybody who knows you knows that you are the last person to take advantage of anybody like you're such a fair and kind person you know wow. <laughs> thank you Holly I don't know it's just it, it was tough like finding out that people really thought I, I was capable of doing that like, I think that's what hurt the most but honestly I was able to help some girls and I was able to like help girls start their own clip stores make their own content I know a few of the girls that are like totally in control of their entire careers now mm. and it started with the clips that I made for them so that makes up for it, in my opinion. Like that makes me really happy that I was at least able to help a few people. I mean, I I know that like when girls come to me and ask me about getting into camming or getting into the industry, like I'm always like, you should talk to Bailey, you know, because I know that you'll give them like honest, fair advice. Um, it also is it doesn't help that like the one girl, and I honestly, like, I'm trying not, I'm not trying to not name her, but I seriously forgot her name because that's how little she means to me. 
that she like was upset with you for how she was portrayed, but maybe you should like not do a ton of drugs and talk about hooking on in front of a documentary crew. I don't know. I even tried That's to do just my suggestion. Out. I didn't know what to do. Like I, I tried to get them to remove some content, but I mean she never told them it was off the record, so I couldn't. My hands were tied. If you have a documentary crew filming you, just assume that nothing's off the fucking record. <laughs> Nothing is off the record. In fact, <laughs> they caught me and I didn't know that they got me on this and it's like whatever, I'm fine with it. I, I think as a producer too, I understand that you need to get like these juicy, controversial tidbits in order to sell a show. Like I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was this moment where I didn't know that like I was being recorded because the guy was doing like a way back wide shot. And you know, I was mic'd with a, with a lapel mics and I didn't know it was on. And I'm like super frustrated because I was doing, it was funny too, cause they were filming me while I was shooting the worst movie of all time, just in terms of like things going wrong, how difficult it was, how strenuous it was. Not that the movie. Well, it was the one with the armor, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, for digital playground. I remember you complaining. It was <laughs> the worst movie to shoot ever, ever. It was a nightmare. And they actually even filmed me on the worst day of all the days. And um, and I was there, and I was like, I think I was putting a budget sheet together or something and and I like I think under my breath which of course the mic caught is like I fucking hate digital playground <laughs> I got it and I had no idea they got that shot and then it ended up in the episode and I was like oh I didn't know you got me on that one but whatever it's fine doesn't it like, feel like the office you know have you ever watched the office yeah like brief I, I prefer the British version well at the end when they see like the documentary and they're like oh they got that Oh, they got that? Oh no, they got me doing that. I felt that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so real quick, I see a lot of people complaining about this buffering on YouTube, so I don't know what's going on because our Zoom like recording that we're doing it through is actually looks great. Um, we have no problems, so I don't know what's happening with YouTube, but I'm like going in and I'm kind of watching the stream and I do see that that is happening. So we might have to, yeah, I see it keeps doing this. So you know what we're gonna do real quick, guys? We're gonna sign out and we're gonna come right back on um, and hopefully we'll have a better stream. All right, we're back. It'll take a while for everybody to kind of filter back in. Um, hello everyone, for those of you who just joined us. Um, we were streaming live in another show, but we were having horrible buffering problems with YouTube, so we stopped the stream and restarted it again. So some of you guys are joining us for the first time, um, and you're probably wondering why we're starting off like mid-conversation. Um, and then a lot of you are gonna be coming back from the previous live chat, hoping that we have a better stream here. So hello everyone. If you're new, you're just joining us, this is Bailey Rain. She's a lovely friend of mine. She's a cam girl. She's an adult model. She's gorgeous. Aww. She is lovely. She loves show tunes. <laughs> and we love her for that. Pretty good um, Fossey Bear says, no more buffering already. Okay, great. I'm going to wait to get to the other super chats until everybody kind of comes back in because I don't want to answer somebody's super chat with them not being in the room to hear my answer clearly. So um, for those of you who don't know what a super chat is, it's your ability to tip me and the question will be in bold. It will be pinned to the top of my chat board so I can more easily see your question. It's just a great way to ensure that um, your question will get to Bailey because I won't be able to answer everybody's question. Also a great way to help support my show. But if you can't afford it, it's totally fine. Um, I love you anyways, and I will try to get to all the questions that I can regardless. So, uh, okay, um, let me check in with Eva, make sure that everything looks good. I don't know if she's logged into the new one. Everything look okay. Um, um, 
Um, Tusha Muji says, could we speak up a little bit? I, I have a loud voice, so I don't think you're talking to me. And my levels are, oh my gosh, I don't have my mic on. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it's going great. Sorry, Bailey. Rookie fail. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. Like, hello, everybody. And like, <laughs> I forgot to turn it on. It's okay. God damn it. I can still hear you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, the internal mic is getting me, but this one is, do I sound better now? I should sound pretty significantly pretty clear. clear. Like super clear. Yeah. Do I sound better or are you just saying that? Less echoey. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> now I think we're doing well. All right. Um, okay. Yay. Okay. Everybody says it's working. Better stream. Awesome. What does Eva say? Do we have Eva's approval? Because that's the only thing that matters. <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, Eva says yes. Perfect. Okay. Great. Okay. Let me find, because I screenshotted everybody's super chats so that I wouldn't miss them from the previous one. Um, okay. Uh, Big H. Big H, I hope you're in here because I want to make sure that you know I got this. She says, thank you, beautiful. Look forward to looking through your book and seeing your amazing work. Thank Aww. you, Big H. I appreciate that. I'm actually working on a new art book, which I like almost had done before quarantine hit. So I'm waiting until I can shoot again before I, before I finish it up. So, um, okay. Nude Brewer says it's still low volume. I don't know, dude. I have this turned like all the way up. So I don't know about that. Um, Eva, how does it sound? I trust you. Not that I don't trust you, but person who said I was not loud enough. Okay. Um, Michael Gavin from New York. Hey, Michael. Uh, he says, do you think more cam girls feature in adult films like doing boy girl? Do you think that, sorry, Michael, are you saying, do you think that more cam girls should or are they overall? I feel like he means should. Don't you, Bailey? Doesn't that sound so, like that should be a should? Is, um, should the cam girls that are crossing over shoot boy girl? Yeah, I think he's asking like if you think that like more cam girls should be doing features. Um, I think more cam girls should be uh, shooting whatever they want to shoot. I think... Uh, <laughs> the answer. I just want them all to cross over so I can hang out with all of them all the time on set. <laughs> <laughs> they can shoot whatever they want. But no, I noticed like a lot of cam girls are really like picky about their boy girl content. And that's because, I mean, if you shoot it yourself, you can profit from it forever. If you mm -hmm. show up on set and shoot one scene, you profit that day. So mm -hmm. girl, I've seen girls profit off scenes they shot like in 2012. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Theirs. they own it they can like sell it forever so i don't know yeah it's it's kind of like there's two sides to it there is of course like what you said and it's funny because we're fighting this because we're helping create as you know self-produced content for twisties mm -hmm. and a lot of girls are like me yeah, <laughs> i'm just gonna make it for myself twisties. why would it why you? would it make it for another company <laughs> no i gotta do all the work which i totally understand um, but I think a lot of girls and correct me if I'm wrong, um, they do it because it helps get their name out there when if you work with bigger model, companies. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a new model, you need that exposure. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. super easy to get it just by shooting for a company. Mm -hmm. Um, personally, I like shooting for companies because it keeps my name out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause I don't want people to think I retired. So right. you see. So I, I'm down, but I don't shoot anything that I wouldn't shoot for myself. Like I don't shoot girl, girl for other companies. I don't shoot boy, girl. I just shoot solo. Right, right, right. Um, okay, K-Max, I see you uh, complaining about um, Super Chat. Was Were we in the middle of answering your Super Chat and then the stream went bad? He was the, You were the one who asked me about Hot Girls Wanted, right? I feel like we answered that, didn't we? Didn't we answer that question? Yeah. Um, oh, he completely missed your answer to the chat. Uh, uh, my answer? Yeah. 
Um, KMX, what was, was your question about hot girls wanted? You can just type it in. You don't have to make it a super chat. I'll, I'm looking at the chat room. I'll be able to tell you. Um, just, just, sorry, there's a 10 second delay to Bailey, by the way, between the chat room and here. So when I ask somebody to respond to me, it takes a while for them to even get me asking them to respond to me. <clears throat> so we're just going to sit here. This is going great. Is I do with that on cam. Like, that's normal. I got you. <laughs> um okay so yes the bailey's hot girls wanted uh i could like sum it up yeah because kmx it was kind of a long answer <laughs> and actually if you go back um because the live shows remain on my youtube channel i don't delete them so if you go back and to the previous live stream it'll be archived already you can literally go back scrub to the end of the video and you can see her full answer um, yeah, I guess summarize it. Okay, to sum it up, it was a lot of work. I didn't get paid for the of it, but some girls have their own career in their own hands now, and I got to start that, and I'm very proud of the progress they've made, and that makes it all worth it. <laughs> Basically, Bailey was paint through no fault of her own, um, painted in a bad light, just because this is why being an agent is so terrible in some ways because sometimes girls make bad decisions and then like the agent's always blamed for it. Now, sometimes the agent makes terrible decisions or like pushes the girls to do things they don't want to do. It goes both ways. And I've seen that too, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. The issue here was um, like where, where do you draw the line? Like if a girl is so out of control that she's harming herself, mm -hmm. do you booking her work? Do you no, because if you stop booking her work, then, then she'll just go to somebody else. Start, or she'll start doing other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, but, it gets to a point where it's like how much of the how much of this girl's life is your responsibility? You're not their mother. Yeah, and I think you know? I said that. <laughs> yeah. And I got into a, a little bit of a disagreement with the agent because apparently his line was further than mine. Like, I didn't think it should have gotten as far as it did. Right. But I mean, I'm not an experienced agent. So how can I sit here and say that I know better? But I just couldn't watch it, you know? Well, I know, but I feel like you've been in the industry long enough and you're a, you're a sensible gal that you know. I was still pretty new like back then though. Cause, Were you? Um, see, I moved here in 2015 and that started at the end of 2015. Mm. I was still like getting a feel of the industry. Yeah. And I saw like a kind of dark side that I hadn't seen before and everyone got to witness it on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, un yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, like as much as I, I try to make my show advocating for like the, you know, smart, responsible, um, wonderful people in the adult industry, because I'm kind of all about trying to show that other side. Cause there's so much media. I mean, if you want to find media that portrays you know, porn girls as broken, irresponsible, not very bright. Like you can find that anywhere. So I'm always trying to show the other side, but I won't deny that that doesn't exist. Yeah. People but get in this industry for the wrong reasons. When it comes to media, the money's in like broadcasting the bad stuff. That's where the money is. That's where the of clicks. Course. No one wants to talk about the good stuff. It's the same with the regular news. Yeah. We don't talk about good stuff on the regular news. No. No one would watch it. No. Yeah. <laughs> Because what sells is fear. Mm -hmm. yes. And drama. Huh? Drama. Yeah. Yeah. Fear, <laughs> fear, drama, sex, all of those things are the things that sells. And mm -hmm. in the end, the news media is a business and they're looking to make money. So, um, okay. I want to get back to some of the super chats from the previous one because I don't want to miss it. Um, Melanie Dawn says, hey, Holly and Bailey, much love and respect for you both. Sadly, I can't stay. I'm scheduling a visit with a new lady friend for next week. Um, well, thank you, Melanie, for coming by and visiting. Yeah, it was a pleasure you. to see you. I don't think she's in this actual new chat. So, well, hopefully bye, Melanie. We send you our love. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, let's go back to some of the super chats that are in here. Um, okay, Greg Potter says, love your channel and you, Holly. Thank you. Bailey, I understand you may be working with Virtual Mate Project. Is, a go, is it a go for you? Love you, doll. 
Um, I was just part of the promotional campaign. I'm not entirely sure why I'm still on their website. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any of my content on there. So I was kind of confused because I saw that I was on their website the other day. I was just part of the promo campaign. <laughs> mm, <laughs> it was like a little so cute. Well, it was a little contest, like whoever got the most sales or whatever um, would be a new girl like on the platform that people could like buy content of or yeah. watch content of but I didn't win so I don't know why I'm still on there <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining but I mean if they want to put me on the site you can pay you back give me that money <laughs> make it rain you know what I'm saying I like money all right come on I <laughs> don't like money we all love money <laughs> uh jimmy says holly your glasses look great by the way thank you i've gotten very lazy i wear them all the time now because you know where where am i going <laughs> I need to look fancy except for here this is as fancy as i get this is for you guys the only time i even i did my eyebrows for you guys <laughs> <laughs> i hope they appreciate it i do i know i hope i hope you guys appreciate my eyebrows <laughs> see like i haven't been able to get botox because of the quarantine and because I'm pregnant, so I can do this. <laughs> I made a joke on Twitter the other day. I was like, after three more months of this, I'm gonna need like filler or Botox or something. And everyone got like mad. I was like, no, I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> people, I guess people just assume nobody gets Botox. Like, well, you gotta do it right. I've never That's had it before. But I have a feeling that three more months in quarantine, I am going to need something. <laughs> well, I can send you to a great girl, to my girl, because I've had all those things done. And the secret is, is that you have to do them. Do not overdo them and do them well so people can't tell. The whole point is that people can't tell. Um, I do think that the overdone lips thing is, is not my favorite. Um, and we see a lot of it. And I think that's probably the greatest fear that people have. Cause I think that's the biggest thing that like changes your face yeah. is getting your lips done too big. I'm like, I'm okay in the lip department, but your I'm lips are great. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, you can do like little, like I've been <laughs> getting Botox since I was 27, but only small amounts. So like I never got deep set wrinkles. So they never had to give me that much because I didn't develop those wrinkles. Cause I've been small, small maintenance. Stormy Daniels taught me that start early do very small increments. And then that way, like you don't have this huge shift and you don't have to put a lot in. So I'm sure all the guys here are like really fascinated by beauty tips. You want to know about Botox. Hey guys. <laughs> tell you. Um, Michael Gavin says, Hey Holly and Bailey. I was just saying, should cam girls jump into adult films? I saw a cam girls, a movie with ginger banks as a cam girl who jumps in. Yeah, I think, um, what Bailey and I were kind of saying, and I obviously, if you watch my sh interview with Ginger Banks, we talk about cam girls, um, is that it's, I think it's diff and Bailey and I've definitely had this conversation because she sent me some girls who were a problem. I'm so sorry, Holly. One girl I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's not your fault. I, was I feel like I'm never allowed to send you anyone ever again. <laughs> and it was for Playboy too. So, and don't, and we're not going to out her and you won't find her on Playboy because she ended up like buying back her content um, because she didn't like it because it didn't match her really, lingerie to the tile on the stairs. She really herself. <laughs> yeah. She herself, so she she hated the photos without that. even having seen them. She was like, I just hated the content we shot. I'm like, you didn't see any of it. She's like, I just know it was bad. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, uh, I had that girl like delete my, she, she had her people like delete my Snapchat, like will report my Snapchat like four times after that. Cause she was so mad at me. <laughs> yeah, she was bitter. But, um, so anyways, the, the point of that is I think that it's, it's a different world for cam girls and for like regular mainstream porn, because you guys come from a place where you're your own boss. You own mm -hmm. your own content. You set your own rules. You do your own production. So it's difficult coming, going from a place where like you're in charge of everything to you just being basically an employee of a company and having to do everything somebody says, even if you don't like it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a tough transition to make. And with how well cam girls are doing 
on their own and supporting themselves. You don't need to. It, you don't need to. So it gets to a point where you're like, why am I doing this? I'm not enjoying myself. I'm not enjoying the content we're shooting. I have no say yeah. and I'm making less money than I normally would. Well, and there's a different uh, mentality. So the porn girls I know, they're, they're team players, if that makes sense. Like they show up, they make sure everyone else looks good. They make a scene for a different company than themselves. And they make sure it looks good and they get paid and then they go home and they do the same thing. Over and over. They're team players. Uh, a lot of cam girls are team players, but you don't have to be a team player to be a successful cam girl. Mm, yeah, that's it true. It's all about you and that's fine. You can still be successful. And I think what we see a lot of is, well, not a lot of, but every once in a while, a cam girl will want to like shoot mainstream to like boost their image, boost their audience. But that team player is not going to show up on set every once in a while and you're going to have a rough day. <laughs> like they're like, uh, this content isn't for me. Why should I try so hard? Or... I don't know, they're just used to making all the rules and all the decisions, but on a set for another company, you don't have that luxury. Like you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a different mentality. Um, not necessarily cam girls in general, but there's more wiggle room to be like all about yourself and be successful as a cam girl. Whereas a porn star really has to work with others and play nice. Yeah, exactly. Because if you come in and you're a pain in the ass, and you don't have your own independent financial support system, and you're a pain in the ass, you just won't get work. They and will you know, never book you again. <laughs> yeah, so it's like you have to play along because you need that money, but if you're a successful cam girl, you don't need that money, so you don't need to play along. So it's like, I can totally see both sides of it for sure. It's not even just playing along, it's like boosting others up mm. for the benefit of the project, not the benefit of just yourself. Right, right. Yeah, so I think it's that's just a good a point. There's just a different mentality every once in a while. Yeah, I think um, it's just important to know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, I will say that there are quite a few companies that are definitely being like more open to allowing, you know, girls to come in and kind of have a say in the production. I know Gamma does that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they, Gamma is like um, adult time. Just for those of you who don't know, Pure Taboo girls way that kind of stuff and they and they let a lot of girls write their own scripts and come up with their own concepts so I think that's that's really great mm -hmm. um but not everybody's like that you know and some of the more old school porn companies like they've been doing it a certain way for fucking decades and mm -hmm. they're not going to change it for you so well especially playboy like yeah it's gonna walk in and be like um this is how you're gonna do everything yeah it's not gonna work <laughs> it's not gonna and, and just the annoying thing is is that like like the content wasn't bad at all. It was and, great. I saw it. <laughs> and like the fact that she told me that it was terrible without even seeing it. And the fact that she didn't say anything on set, that was really frustrating. She was really quiet on set. And it wasn't until afterwards that she sent me this long email about how much she like hated what we shot. I was like, why didn't you say anything? Like you gave me zero feedback. And like, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to read your mind. Like, what do you want from me? At but, least you worked with her though. Like she didn't have to like see this set that she was so afraid of, like be released onto the internet. Like you gave her an out. Yeah. Well, That's I don't, very nice of you. like if you don't, I don't want to release content of you. You fucking hate it. You mm -hmm. know? And I mean, she, you know, reimbursed me all the costs, and she, which was a lot. So I was like, okay, fine. Like in the mm -hmm. end, you know, makes no difference to me. And I also didn't want Playboy to have like a set of a girl who was going to, be difficult yeah <laughs> i didn't want to do that to playboy i didn't i was like and then when i sent them the email i didn't even get into it i was like this shoot didn't go well i'm not gonna send it to you guys trust me you don't want this girl on your website um <laughs> oh, no. I will use i will just book somebody else for you and they were like okay oh like, they handled it pretty well oh yeah, yeah yeah they were like they didn't like even ask why they were like okay we trust you you know like i i don't ever do that so mm -hmm. they knew i had a good reason <laughs> um okay uh kmax sent another question says hollywood are the main production companies the one i hear a lot in videos i watch is racy angel i've never heard of racy angel do you mean evil angel you 
Elegant Angel. There's a lot of angel companies, but oh, Raven Angel, angel is not one of them. <laughs> um, this is not one I've ever heard of. Is that one of the biggest ones? Is, I would say no, because I've never heard of them. Is Browsers another one? So yes, Browsers. Okay, so there's several large corporations that own a lot of brands. There's MindGeek's the biggest one. They own Pornhub. They own Browsers. They own Reality Kings. They own Twisties. They own Digital Playground. They own Pornhub. They own YouPorn, I think. They own RedTube. They used, to Mofos. Own, they used to own Playboy Plus. Not anymore. They, yeah, well, they had a licensing deal with them. And they also had a licensing deal with Wicked. But those oh, two really? didn't mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, it was just a licensing. I just, it was just so. like a license. They like ran the website. And now Gamma's doing it, actually. So then Gamma is the other one. And Gamma is Adult Time. Girls Way, Pure Taboo, basically anything Brie Mills has done is uh, Gamma. Um, mm. So there's so many like other like sub genres under that. But basically, if you go to Adult Time, like all the Gamma properties are in Adult Time. So, um, and then the other one, what I would say is Vixen Media Group, and that's Vixen Black Tushy, Black to Raw Tushy Raw. Mm-hmm. So those are like. Right? Am I, am I missing any of like the big three? I mean, isn't there? So who owns Deeper? Oh yeah, sorry, Vixen Media Group. Okay, Deeper is part of Vixen Media Group as well. Yeah, thank you. I missed that one. Um, and then obviously there's like the independents <laughs> like Evil Angel, Elegant Angel, um, Hustler, stuff like that. But those are like the three big corporations, I would say. Porn has become very corporate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um okay jeremiah says hum i've never watched bailey rain goes on bailey's twitter bailey rain is amazing and so hot all hail bailey <laughs> Aww. Aww, <that's> so <laughs> cute. that is so cute um okay greg potter says wow i'm so disappointed you should have won you're an absolute winner in my book yeah, Holly, I totally agree with you on the Botox perfect example. Is a letter ocean way too much Botox lips? Yeah. Paul sent some money for nappies, not diapers. I'm English. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Christopher Crochet says, what about performers who leave and then become anti-porn? Do you think they made bad personal choices or was the industry just not for them? <sighs> I feel like I see a bunch of different reasons. Like I remember Bell Knox did that. Um, who else did it? Like that was the well, big Mia Khalifa, thing. obviously. Yeah, Mia Khalifa. What What do they usually say happened? Like they were coerced or something? Yeah, they. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, coerced or they were like chewed up and spit out um the stigma made their life difficult which is absolutely true that's true for everybody that's not necessarily i wouldn't say that's the porn industry's fault as much as it is society's fault in the way that they view the porn industry because anybody in the porn industry we all deal with stigma um but yeah i mean i would say like it's all of those things um and everybody has their own experience and I don't want to take away from people's experiences. Um, mm-hmm. For some people, it's really, it's not the right choice. Mm-hmm. And um, you got to really think about it before you get into this industry because it will follow you forever. And, you know, some people make bad choices and some people just aren't. I think also too, especially in this new like day and age of like OnlyFans and Snapchat and people making all this money on their own, girls come into the industry thinking that they're going to make like a fuck ton of money right off the bat. Mm -hmm. and they don't and they don't get all the bookings that they think they want to get and they get mad because basically they don't they don't succeed and the thing is is that not everybody can succeed in any industry like there's always going to be people who just don't make it and that's just the reality of the world like life isn't necessarily fair just because you want something doesn't mean that you're going to get it Um, and also too, a lot of girls who are super successful have been in this industry for a long time. Not everybody is Alana Rhodes who comes in and is just like off the bat, like, you know, doing really well and like super successful. 
-hmm. So yeah, it's just like, it's just one of those things that sometimes you really got to put in your time. And um, sometimes even if you put in your time, you're not going to be as successful as you want to be. And, and that's just life. Yeah. Well, and I mean, if someone was coerced or, you know, had to do something that they didn't want to do, like, yes, I would want to hear their story. But I've, I don't know, I've seen people like very happy to be here and then it doesn't work out later on and they change like the whole, their whole experience is mm-hmm. nothing like what they shared while they were here. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't, I feel like some, I'm not saying everyone, but I feel like some people, they have to blame someone else if mm-hmm. it's not. Big yeah. success. And it's just so easy to blame the whole industry. Like, mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, no, I agree with you. A lot people generally like to play the victim role because it's much easier for them. It means that they don't have to take responsibility for their actions or their failures. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's not always your fault if you fail. Sometimes you just fucking fail. Like sometimes you just aren't good at things or people don't respond to you in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And um I do think also too that the mainstream media really feeds off those stories of people Mm -hmm. saying that they came out of porn and that it ruined their lives and they made a bad decision because I feel like there's almost like this redemption there. It's almost like this religious thing where you like, oh, Father, please forgive my sins. And then like they wash you clean of your sins. So it's almost like you have to come out and say, you know, I had a terrible experience and it treated me horribly. And then people were like, oh, poor you. Like, you know, now you can move on with your life because you have, you know, professed this intense um, remorse for what you did. You know, you couldn't come out of the industry and be like, oh, well, it didn't work out for me. I guess I'll move on and do something else. It's like the media wants you to be like, it was horrible. You know, I think there's something to that as well. I don't know. Almost like a societal baptism. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, I've never thought of it that way, but yeah. yeah. Like, wow. a re- like a rebirth kind of Looking thing. Deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, yeah, you know, not everyone's going to have a good experience. And uh, I wish people did. You yeah. Know, I, I wish that, um, I, I, di- I wish that didn't happen, but you know, like one of my favorite quotes was from Asa Akira. She says, the porn industry is the perfect job for a very small group of people and the worst job for everybody else. And I agree with her. Yeah, not everyone can do this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. (sighs) I see. I mean, both girls and guys. Yeah, totally. I mean, for guys in a way, it's hard. I mean, maybe the stigma is not as much. But yeah, it, but there's so much pressure on them. Pressure. <laughs> oh my God. Like having to keep your dick hard. Like, oh. And you know, I know you don't do boy girl or work on boy girl sets really, but man, the fucking fails I've seen, it's awful. I I can't imagine the pressure. I couldn't handle oh, the pressure. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, K Max says, Holly, I noticed you get a lot of Joe Rogan questions. Maybe this is because your audience is mostly male and Rogan is known to be the guy's podcaster. Yes, I do get a lot of uh, Joe Rogan questions or comparisons or we were, Bailey and I were talking earlier that like she was saying that I think my show and Joe Rogan are the two shows you only listen, that you listen to. And a lot of people say that we have a similar format, but obviously wildly different shows in terms of (laughs) popularity, income and other things. Um, I saw some people ask me, huh? So far. So far. Yeah. Hey, look, if Spotify wants to come to me and offer me a hundred million dollar deal to move exclusively to their platform, I'm here. I'm, where's the paperwork? I will sign it. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. It's someone told me like the number of downloads each one of his episodes gets. And now I can't remember what it is, but it's in the millions. It's fucking crazy. It's so much. Because I know, like, I think, like, This American Life gets, like, 6,000 downloads an episode. I mean, 6 million. Um, And I think Joe Rogan, like, more than doubles that. It's fucking nuts. That guy's, like, he's become, like, a real influence on society. It's crazy, you know? Like, people really listen to what he has to say. Good for him, man. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy listening to him. And I I like that he, he, like boosts people's careers 
and he doesn't really ask for much in return. Like he just, he's like, you're interesting. Come yeah, on. totally. You don't have to be like famous or have like huge, you know, a huge audience. Um, for him, it's just talking to interesting people mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Paul Sanders says, Bailey, I was in a dungeon in downtown Portland a few weeks ago. A man started a conversation with me in which he confessed that he was raised Mormon and he was loving what he was seeing. Is that a question? I don't know. <laughs> <This is> a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he wants to I know, know your so thoughts on it. <laughs> oh, I, I know so many Mormon people in porn. Like, I know that's like not what he was talking about <laughs> yeah so i mean okay i think he's probably just talking about people who are raised in like a really conservative background and then like get exposed to sex and porn and and that kind of thing and um you know they're like really you know they find they find this other side to them mm -hmm. other side to life which is uh very exciting for them and yeah you're right there's a lot of mormon performers um if you guys go back and listen to my episode with um, Alina Lopez, she talks extensively about being raised in the Mormon church. Uh, Kendra Spade as well. I didn't even know about those two. I'm talking about other people. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, Alina is like, Alina's very like anti Mormon too. Like, she's got a very strong opinion on it. And her family's still Mormon. And she's still very close to her family. Her mom like makes her, sews her AVN dresses for her every year. They walked with her on the red carpet. Like, her family is Mormon. They're and supportive. they still love and support her. So it's a really interesting dynamic, um, one that most people wouldn't assume would be the case, but yeah. No. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool too. Um, so, oh wait, here we go. Sorry. Sometimes it skips and then I miss like a fuck ton of super chats and I don't want to do that. Okay, here we go. Um, Jamie says, hi girls, Bailey, do you have friends who are porn stars by chance? I wish to see Elsa Jean soon. Um, I would say almost all my friends are porn stars. <laughs> I don't really talk to anyone from like back home anymore. <laughs> but I mean, I don't have any like non-work friends really anymore. So I, I, yeah, I guess they're all porn stars or directors. Yeah, I was wondering when uh, you were going to. Hey, to me I've seen your pictures. You can be a porn star if you want. Thanks. I'll call you whatever you want, Holly. <laughs> um, Ninety-one Giles says thoughts on GDP and legal ramifications. Do you mean gross domestic product? That's what I was about to ask. Are we are we like an economics podcast now? I don't know what. You, I feel like he's got to mean something else, but GDP generally means gross domestic products. So um, I'm even like Googling it and I don't see anything else coming up except for gross domestic product. Are you Googling GDP sex term? <laughs> okay, actually let's do that. It's GDP sex. <laughs> Maybe it's some like acronym for some sex act that we don't know. Granddaddy. Oh, girls do porn. Oh, Oh, I said granddaddy okay. porn. <laughs> oh, I was like, gross domestic product. We're like talking about economics. <laughs> um, so we already answered this question um, earlier. And uh, I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts on it, Bailey? I mean, I feel like we're not like super duper like informed about the whole story. So it's hard to say what exactly we feel i feel like i'd have to read up on it again because i read up on it like what, months ago i don't remember all the details but um okay his next question is james dean and thoughts on blackballing now oh, he's really into asking the controversial questions today um well i don't shoot boy girl so i don't <laughs> i don't really come in contact with a lot of male performers outside of like fun events where there's little to no drama so I only know what people tell me and I've heard some not so great things but I try not to like stick my nose where it doesn't belong so I think that's a good I answer don't know enough to really yeah yeah I think that's a good answer um I know people I've heard bad things I've heard wonderful things um 
I will say that my personal experiences with James Dean have always been really positive. I've shot him a few times and he was wonderful every time I worked with him. I really liked him. Um, that being said, doesn't mean that what other girls' experiences with him weren't valid. Um, but yeah, same thing. Like, I don't like to stick my nose where it doesn't belong. And, uh, you know, it's hard to comment on that kind of stuff when you weren't there. Mm -hmm. uh, so KFB says, I'd like to thank Holly for introducing me to Bailey on your Snapchat. Oh. Always loved when Bailey did the BTS of your shoots. I know you were you're oh, such a great BTS person, especially since you always zoom in on my butt while I'm shooting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, first of all, thank you. It's very sweet. And second of all, I found a video of you on my phone from when I took over your Snapchat one day, and it was you with a dildo on your head. And um, oh. I'm like, oh, that when it was when I was pretending to be a unicorn. Yes, the one with the strap. Who was the girl? Uh, Scarlet Sage, I think. Okay. I think you were sucking the dick on your head. Oh, that's you gotta send that to me. I need to I need to find it again and send it to you. Yeah. I was like, I forgot that. That is a national I love I still have that thing. That thing is awesome. I should wear that during an interview. <laughs> I tell you what, you know what? Maybe I'll do in my next interview. I should have done it this time. Like, because you know how when you cam, you like have people tip you to do stupid shit. I should like whoever sends me like a certain super chat number like i'll wear a dildo on my head for actually fuck youtube might ban me they're weird about that stuff maybe yeah not. you'd have to replace the dick part with something funny like i don't know something what if i put like a wig on it and dress it up as <laughs> <laughs> oh a little teeny tiny wig <laughs> oh my god do you remember that guy who used to send you dick pics with the drawings like he would put faces on it Oh yeah, um, yeah, things my dick does. I bet maybe you could do something kind of like that. Turn it into yeah, a maybe. I don't know. I'm scared though. Like, because I don't remember it being like detailed. I thought it was pretty smooth. Oh, the dildo? Yeah, it's it's it's. There's no like veiny yeah, or head or anything. It's just a black thing. You put some googly or yeah, googly, googly eyes on it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Fuck. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> scary because, like, I'm always scared that YouTube's going to fucking poop me. They're really strict. Yeah, they are pretty strict. Um, okay. Uh, Greg Potter says, I know August Ames killed herself after being bullied on social media. Do you all get harassed and how do you deal with it? Bailey, I can make it. I can imagine you naked, cuddled up with that bear. I want his job. There's also a Oh, you got a Pokemon back there, too. Um, yeah, like what happened with August was so fucking tragic and going back and looking at some of the comments she received, it was, it got very dark very quickly. Mm. Um, people that are usually, you know, nice and respectful were saying just the meanest things. And I think it goes back to, um, we, we want to be a keyboard warrior sometimes and we forget that there should be boundaries you still need to have empathy and treat people like people like i've i've had people do it on stuff i've posted like not toward me but towards someone who disagrees with me on something like people mm -hmm. just love to attack someone that they disagree with and i think as a society we all could do better i did it i made a tweet about this a couple of weeks ago like sometimes it's okay to like treat someone like a person, even if you disagree, because just yelling at someone too, is just going to make them like hold tighter to whatever they believe. So you're not going to get anywhere if you attack them. So if you do want to like make progress, you have to like, sometimes you have to be gentle. I think we're becoming less and less so on the internet as time goes on. It's kind of yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, I think that the anonymity provided by, being a faceless person online is where a lot of that aggression and that lack of consideration comes. Cause you know, people will say things to you that they would never say to your face because then mm -hmm. they have to take responsibility for what they say. Yeah. But if they're like, you know, just some anonymous person, um, they can say whatever they want. So mm -hmm. it definitely brings out like a bad side in people. It's kind of like when you're driving the way that like you yell at people and flip mm -hmm. people off in a way that like you never would, normally like in person 
you know, like that, like the car protects you. There was a really great ad about like safety driving that showed two people at the grocery store with grocery carts and they were like fighting, you know, like when you, when you get in like road rage and mm-hmm. they would, like cut each other off with the grocery carts and like flip each other off and like yell at people. And they were like, you wouldn't do this in a grocery store. Like, why do you do this in the car? And it was, it was a great example of when you take people out of that, like protective environment of the car, like how ridiculous that behavior truly is, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how it seems so out of place. So I thought that was an interesting take on it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I never thought of it that way before, but yeah. Um, DS Domination says, hi, Holly and Bailey. This is Kevin. You are both gorgeous. Holly, I really like trans girls. Are you planning to interview Cora Del Rio? I don't know who that is. Um, I definitely want to interview more trans people. I have a list of people that I want to have on. Um, there's quite a few people that I've tried. I chased up Chanel Santini for a while and then I just gave up. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I don't know who that is, but I'll, I'll, I'll look them up for sure. Um, Paul sent a little contribution for my diaper fund. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Gigi says, Holly and Bailey, Bailey, you remind me of the classic Playboy models. I love your still work in particular. So glad I discovered you. Aww. Now that's a huge fucking compliment. Whoa. Thank you. You do, have, um, you do have like that classic Playboy look. I mean, everything that we've shot for Playboy has been really some of my favorite stuff. So. Mine too. <laughs> Thanks, Al. You're welcome. <sighs> Um, okay. Pastime 79 says, is there a specific porn site you recommend that is good for guys to join? Me or you? Uh, I, I don't know. I assume all questions are like directed to you if they don't say, but, um, we can both answer it. Um, <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I don't watch a lot of porn. I know that's going to blow everyone's mind, but I, I was born with like the best imagination ever. (laughs) Um, yeah, I got so much in the spank bank. I just, (laughs) I would love to know what you fantasize about Bailey. You seem like, I mean, I know you're not, but you do come across as this incredibly like wholesome girl. Are you going to tell us? I don't think you'd get it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean you wouldn't get it? <laughs> um, are you familiar with um, the company Nintendo and how they have a um, Zelda yes. franchise? Are you getting her, bringing her inside? Thank you. Khaleesi's going um, crazy out there. Yeah, I have like a, a Link and Zelda thing that I like. Don't touch me. Really? Oh no, it's, it. girl, it's fine. I got, I have an angry clown fetish, so you know. Really? Yeah. I don't like. I I like you. I never watch porn, so <laughs> and I don't actually like fantasize about that. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last. But like, I don't know. There's something like weirdly hot about it. Like like it. Or yeah. what kind of clown are we talking? Like it? Like an angry clown. Like not like a happy clown. Like it there's something creepy. It's there's something I think it's because I work in porn and um I feel kind of awkward discussing this with my husband in the next room. <laughs> like because <my laughs> <husband's assaulted. laughs> you're gonna give him ideas for how to like I know he's gonna come out with like a clown mask on. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about because I'm so like I can't watch regular porn because I know everybody in it and I'm very jaded. So for me, it's like you kind of have to take the humanity out of people in order for me to, to work for me because otherwise it's just too like, they're, I don't know, it's too like my work. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, this is work, you know what I mean? And yep. I know that person or I know that location or, oh, I, you know, I know that place and I know that location and it doesn't like you to use baby oil on the couches. Like, <laughs> I mean, those are the things that I think of, you know yeah. what I mean? Totally makes sense. It's like you're fantasizing about your coworkers or something like yeah yeah exactly if someone's like really annoying you're like oh I can't I can't no <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but even like 
even even if not, I mean, especially if I like somebody. Like, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's weird. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. But that makes sense. I, no, I don't think that that's weird at all. And I think that's pretty common. And um, yeah, that, that totally makes sense to me. So. <laughs> Well, there's one part in the game, okay, there's a lot of parts in the game where the princess gets like captured and held hostage by this really big guy. You know, I'm just going to stop talking about it. No, I like it. It's good. <laughs> uh, the people the who know. The damsel in distress fantasy is pretty, pretty common. Good. <laughs> You're not weird, Bailey. It's okay. <laughs> We're not here to kink shame you. <sighs> Believe me, girl, I have somebody who writes me every couple of years asking if he can eat my poop. So that's nothing compared to. Oh my gosh. I was just caviar the other day. Not, huh? your, not your guy, a different guy. Different guy? Yeah. I, was ju- I just talked about this on cam a couple of days ago. I was talking about how I was like with this girl and, and this guy like literally just came up and offered her like 600 bucks to go up to his hotel room. He would stay down on the main floor. Dude, I think that's the same guy. Did he call it scat caviar and um, toilet treats? Did he I want you to pee in a champagne glass and like poop on like a, like in a silver dish and he'd bring like a caviar spoon? Nope, this guy wasn't that classy. He just oh. wanted her to put her butt over the bathtub. <laughs> oh, see this guy is like a whole tea set that he wants to set up. It was really funny. So I, re- so I got the email recently from him. I've talked about this guy like many times on my podcast. So a lot of you guys have heard about him. Um, and my, and I read it to my dad <laughs> the other day and my, and the guy offered me like $2,500. Every time he sends me an email, he offers me more money. <laughs> and so I read it to my dad and he's like, are you going to do it? And I was like, no. And he goes, you're just flushing money down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh dad, you're so funny. Good dad joke. Oh my god! Yeah, that's such a dad thing to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you got the fancy one. Yeah, he's <laughs> and his emails are are they're very like well worded, like no grammatical errors. Like he uses big like he's an educated guy, you know. Um, but uh, he's got a he's got a fetish. So, anyways, um, not into it, but. Thanks. This is this hot conversation we're having, Holly. I know, right? Everyone's so turned <laughs> That's okay. My show is not for turning people on. I call it <laughs> the owner killer. Um, uh, Secrets MC says, uh, MP, sorry, says, what's your thoughts on the Korean baseball organization using sex dolls as fans at their games? I, I wasn't aware of that. That sounds amazing. And um, someone please send me a photo because yeah. I think that would be great. Ever just sent me a text saying that she loves me. I love <laughs> you too. What did I say? Was it the, oh, probably the dad. Actually, we're 10 minutes, 10 second lag behind, so I don't know what I said. That was so <laughs> Sex dolls, that's awesome. That's, uh, that's great. That's They're probably cheaper than dolls, man. though. Like, can you imagine the after party? <laughs> <laughs> Even the locker room. Man. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and like, are we talking like the high quality sex dolls that are I'm like the five thousand dollars each? Or are we talking like blow up sex I'm dolls? I'm thinking blow up dolls. Yeah, <laughs> I guess everybody's like always like cheering, like because aren't they like this? Like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's and like if the wind picks right? up, they just kind of do this. And if the wind blows, yeah, the like move. Wait, what if the wind like really picks up and then they like blow into the field and then you just have like, <laughs> sex dolls like just flying everywhere? The inflatable man thing too. To, like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. They will be prepared for all distractions. Uh, yeah. But- <laughs> wow. I, I I I hadn't heard of that, but I love that idea. So thanks for the visual because that's pretty funny. Um, okay. Uh, Jeremiah says, favorite movies, books, or songs? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
I've been like watching a lot of like older movies and I'm, I say older, it's going to piss people off because <laughs> not that old, but they're old to me. Um, like, no, I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm like, I'm like, how old Bailey? What is an old movie to you? I don't know. And I, I think it's safer for me to go a different direction. Um, but I really like the Lion King, like the original. Okay. Really good. It was like my first movie that I remember. So. Okay. And the music's amazing. I love Elton John. Like, um, God, music. I mean, I've been listening show to tunes. Oh, what? Show tunes. Yeah, I was gonna say I've been listening to a lot of Wicked lately. Like I'm back on my Wicked kick. Like it was Book of Mormon until about I don't know what was it March fifteenth when my heart was broken. Yeah. Ripped from my chest. Yeah. <laughs> um oh hamilton i love hamilton hamilton's good oh ooh, fiddler on the roof i don't know i've been listening to a lot of show tunes because it like it takes me out of the the reality that is now like mm-hmm. it's it's nice and it's like a story if you listen to them in order yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true a really long story that it is yeah. and hamilton's kind of cool because it's like a history lesson you know but in an yeah. entertaining way yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, pastime 79, is there a specific porn set you recommend that is good for guys to join? I feel like they asked this question before and we totally skated past that. I so I'm sorry that you had to ask that again. Hey, Holly, just list all the sites you work for. Yeah, there you go. Um, it yes. depends on what you're after. If you're after mm-hmm. for lesbian erotica, I would go to Twisties. Um, I shoot most of their content and they have great stuff. Um, hollyrandall.com is also an option. It depends on what you're after. Um, there's so many different adult websites that feature different things. Um, a good place actually, honestly, where you can get a lot in one is adult time, to be honest. I just, uh, launched my channel on there. Holly Randall unfiltered is a channel on there and hollyrandall.com is a filter, the channel on there, but they're picking up a lot of other producers as well as producing their own stuff. So adult time probably has like the greatest variety in one website because they're basically like the Netflix of porn. So that's probably your best bet if you're looking for a wide variety. Is it like a monthly subscription? Yeah. Yeah. It's literally just like Netflix. So yeah. Um, Okay. We are like way behind on our questions. (laughs) Um, Paul Sanders. Oh, God damn it. Sorry. I just uh, Bailey, read the Beauty Trilogy by Anne Rice. It's a trilogy about what happens to Sleeping Beauty after she is awakened. Anne Rice is a great author. I read all of like her Vampire Chronicles. I was obsessed with those. Anne Rice. I don't know if you've ever read Anne Rice. Mm-mm. I'm going to have to use the Google machine. The Google machine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've actually, I've not read the Beauty Trilogy, but um, I would imagine it's probably pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, JDS says, Holly and Bailey, any possibility of doing cosplay shoots? Zelda, Android 18 from DBZ, etc. Big fan of you both. I have some like cosplay stuff up on my, on my website, um, baileyrain.com and also MFC share. I, um, I actually did. Oh my God, Holly, please don't judge me. I actually did a boy girl video where I play both the boy and the girl. <laughs> That's a clever way to get around like everybody begging you to do boy girl. I was Link and Zelda in the same video and I need to get better at using the green screen. <laughs> green screen is not easy. People actually don't realize that green Please screen <laughs> can be very <laughs> tough. I've had a few people request that I shoot green screen and I'm just like it's okay. hard. It's because I do all my own editing easy. too. Hmm. I do. I do my own editing. I do everything. So you have to light green screen really carefully because if any of the green yes. leads onto you, uh, yeah. yeah. And you need a lot of space because you need to be far back from the the green background so that the light doesn't bounce onto the background onto you. Mm-hmm. So because light is like a box which you would know if you watched my online 
basic studio lighting course with Bailey Rain that I have available right now on my Vinny Vids page or at patreon.com slash Holly Randall art. Um, I, I talk about that, how light comes from everywhere. <clears throat> um, okay. We're going to wrap this up soon. Cause I've had her on for like an hour and a half. And I know that we need to make dinner over here because mama goes to bed early now. No. Um, <laughs> Ali asks if Bailey Rain has ever performed with Manuel Ferrara. So Ali, uh, Bailey's never done Boy Girl. So no, and she's not going to do Boy Girl. Don't ask when she's going to do it, for how much, when she's doing her first <laughs> anal. None of that shit's happening, at least anytime soon. So there you go. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions in here that we should answer before we go? Um, Marvin asks, uh, he says, I've had the opportunity to watch Bailey being interviewed several times at AVNs and she's always so poised and articulate. Mm -hmm. Did that talent come naturally or did she have to really work to develop it? Um, <laughs> so I, um, I spent a lot of time public speaking before, I started camming and doing adult work because, um, I mean, I studied education in school. So, <laughs> so I've spent a lot of time like speaking in front of groups of people and, you know, trying to be as clear and articulate as possible because, you know, when you have 300 kids listening to you on a freaking headset and you're on the loudspeakers, like you usually only get one chance to explain something and then their attention is elsewhere. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I spent a lot of time like developing, um, <laughs> my, my speaking skills. I was very shy as a kid, so it, it took a lot of work and thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. Aww. Um, pastime says, thanks. I have not been to adult time site. I'm old and out of style. No problem. There's a lot of adult sites out there. So always happy to make suggestions because I understand that um, it's hard to know, especially if you don't work in the adult industry. Um, but yeah, again, it just like, if you gave me more specific like niche that you were into, I could give you a more specific direction on what website to go to. But if it's just porn in general, um, adult time is probably a good place to explore all kinds of different styles. Um, James says, Uh, I don't understand what this question is. One athlete and one musician to let give you a facial. Oh, like if I could pick an athlete and pick a musician, maybe? I don't know. Mm, pass. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. talking about like a cucumber microdermabrasion facial. I can do that myself. <laughs> Maybe he's talking about like the vampire facial or like little PRP, oh, no. little, like exfoliation. Maybe it's not what we think it is. Maybe we just too automatically assume that it's something perverted. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, Walter, I see you're petitioning Eva for a raise. She just got a motherfucking raise. So. Yeah. Don't say I don't, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Eva's rolling in it now. <laughs> so I gave her a raise. So stop pretending like I don't care. <laughs> she deserves more than I could ever afford to pay her. She knows that. I mean, unless you guys send me a fuck ton of money and then, you know. Eva could also start an OnlyFans, which we've discussed many times. Yeah. And, uh, she continues to tease it and she doesn't follow through. So, you know. I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but <laughs> I am so surprised that OnlyFans was the site that took off. I. You're a freaking agree. nightmare. <laughs> like, like the tech department. Oh, my God. <laughs> I. I. Was unable. I was unable to live stream for like a year and a half, and I would frequently just like reach out, like, "Hey, still?" Like I could when I joined in 2017 or whatever when they added it, and then I couldn't up until about a month ago. And 
still, I can't get anyone to join the actual chat. I'm just streaming to myself. <laughs> but I would like reach out and they would respond and be like, no, you're fine. No, we fixed it. You're crazy. And I was just like, why would I make that up? <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm just trying to give you like IT problems. I don't understand why I would make this up. Like, I just want to make money. You want me to make money. Let's make money. Fix it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, their interface could be so much better. It's pretty clunky and well, if you need so many ways that it would make it easier for content creators to sell more content, easier for members to access what they want, easier for everybody to make more money and they just won't do it. I don't know. I guess they're making well, enough if money. If you need to they... find a video from like years ago, you're screwed. Oh yeah. Scrolling. Scroll. Yeah. You gotta like scroll, scroll. scroll through. Yeah. Forget it. I've been on there since like 2017. Like, yeah. I, I don't care to look that far down. I don't yeah. even care. Yeah. <laughs> and it usually freezes up about halfway through. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, it does well, so we're gonna we're gonna stay. Yeah, it's yeah. popular. Yeah. All right, Bailey. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure to see you. I'm sorry for all the technical snafus. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Maybe fun. one day I'll see you in real life. Oh, a girl can dream. <laughs> when maybe one day we'll We'll, we'll set that Book of Mormon date again. I would love that. I know, me too. <laughs> hmm. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Bailey, just in case they don't know, where can they find you online? Where should people go look for more Bailey Rain? Um, let's see. I'm on Twitter. I'm at the Bailey Rain and BayRay92. I have a suitable for work Twitter for those of you who are working not at home. I don't know if you work from home, everything's suitable for work. So that, mm. that term's kind of, <laughs> I know, right. The term's taking on a different meaning now. <laughs> um, let's see. My Instagram is also bayray92. Um, my website is baileyrain.com. My Snapchat's through fan intro and I am on OnlyFans. just Bailey Rain. Super easy. Cool. And you guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Holly Randall. Um, actually you should definitely make sure that you're following me on Instagram because we are going to be doing a giveaway, I think starting tomorrow, right, Eva? Um, we're going to be giving away a big deluxe manscaped package, um, that comes with all kinds of goodies. So oh make God. sure no pun intended. <laughs> um, it's really nice. So yeah, it's really nice stuff. So make sure it's a great package. This is my husband in the background. He shaves his balls with manscaped so he can attest <laughs> to how great it is <laughs> um so uh make sure that you're following me on instagram so that you can enter that contest also go to hollyrandallunfiltered.com sign up for our newsletter um that's really fun we very much eva's putting together a great newsletter every month and it just keeps you up to date on all the fun stuff that we're doing and I don't have anyone scheduled for another quarantine chat yet for next week, but I promise I will. So just make sure that you're following me on all my social media platforms and I will announce it as soon as I get a chance. And um, if you guys aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, why aren't you? You should be. It's free. And um, I put up a lot of content. And then if you want to support the show beyond the super chats, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. I think that's it. <laughs> Bailey, thank you so much. You're awesome. You froze. I lost you. Oh, she left. Okay. Oh, it's just me. Look, wow. I'm really large on the screen now. Okay. We're going to say, we're going to take this as saying goodbye. Thank you guys so much for coming. Love you all. And I will see you next time.